Hi, I'm Pox. I'm Raggable. And you're watching the Commute Cast by Two Smart Guys. And this is recorded on August 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Uh, where have you been? I don't know, but the phone has the date on it. We're recording on the phone. Uh, hopefully the phones hold out. So we're recording on two iPhone 4s right now. Are we, not, are we supposed to go this way? Uh, I don't see a sign saying not to. Well, there's the person telling us not to. When? Flagging us down before, wasn't no, it? No, that's a whole... That was like five miles back. Oh, okay. It's a whole nother road. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm worried about this. Okay, I think that's better. Okay. <laughs> Make eye contact with the lens. There's no... There's... We could record on the forward-facing cameras, which would make sense, because then we could see what we're but doing. it's crappy. Yeah, it's only, you know, standard deafish. Deafish? It's some weird it's, resolution? Well, it's 640 by 480. Okay. That but it's not widescreen. No. So it's... 640 by 480, non-widescreen would be considered what these days? 480p? It's Yeah, it's still 480p. It's not bad. Anyways, supposedly DVD quality. Yeah. Anyways, what's on the agenda? Oh, um, the agenda. <laughs> like we have an agenda. <laughs> what would you like to be on the agenda? Um, what would I like to have on the agenda? What were we talking about a minute ago with the cameras off? I don't know. The setup. The setup. Uh, two cameras. Two recording on two cameras. This time we're doing. Um, Audio through the H4N. H4N with lavaliers on. So, hopefully it sounds better. You know what? On the table uh, for the show we recorded last night, yeah, this was picking up better than the lavaliers were for um, Couch Guy and Yakko. Well, that's their purpose. The, lab- the lavaliers are pretty. What's what's the angle of pickup on a lavalier? No, I'm saying they sounded better than us. Oh, they sounded better than us. Yeah. Better as in the cleaner, cleaner, crisper, cleaner, cleaner. Yeah. Which uh, is weird because last week you guys were pretty echoey because everybody was using it. It was just pointed more more in their direction. However, it was set up. It's it's fairly directional. So as long as it's in the right direction and it's close, it sounds good. And, and well, there, last time we pointed it, you know, Couch Guy and I pointed it at at us. I don't think I turned up the levels though. And I don't think, and I think it was pointing down instead of up at you guys. No. Uh, I think that was a big difference because it was pointing and getting the echo from the wall or something. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, I'm surprised that it picked up the audio better for them than the level ears. Yeah, I'm just, which is weird. Like my audio was kind of low, and I was wearing a level ear. Uh, but, but it's a four channel mixer, so. Anyways, it's cool. It's all good. And we can put splitters on it too. We're going to put more labs on and monitor it. Yeah. Oh, more labs on. Yeah. Like inputs. Yeah. Like Tom, uh, 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 Couch Guy brought over a, an XLR splitter, so you could put two oh. two labs. Is it yeah, still? It, it's uh, not separate channels, but it's left and right. I mean, it's you know whatever channel you put it on. So if you put the splitter on the left channel, then there's going to be two people going into the left. You won't oh. be able to separate them later. Oh, okay. Or adjust their levels separately. Uh, but it works. Uh, um, really hear the car. <laughs> it was windy outside like crazy. Not good. So I was in Iowa and there was like, or no, Kansas? <laughs> Not Kansas. Nebraska. Nebraska. And we were driving through tornadoes. Really? You didn't record that at all? Like, hey, look at this. Here's a tornado, and I'm driving through it? I did. Maybe I'll put some of it in here. How come you didn't post that crap to Facebook? Oh, okay, because it wasn't... Because you couldn't see any of the tornadoes. There were just tornado warnings. And it was, you know... Way was, to exaggerate. I drove through tornadoes. I drove through tornado warnings. There's a difference. Okay, One's see, the actual manifestation of something. The other is just a caution. <laughs> okay, so let's just put it this way. It was... It was my wife was looking at the clouds. She's like, "Those are that's some pretty cool lightning. Look at that lightning! It's jumping around in between itself like that." Ah, you should look, you should look up and see what that is. It's kind of cool. And then I get a call from my uncle, who's like 200 miles ahead, and he said, "Hey, the, decided to stop for the night because I said there's tornadoes, but don't worry, they're in Lincoln County." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, we'll just stop in the next town. We pass the signs as Lincoln County." 
<laughs> Let's stop in the town with the tornadoes. Yeah, she was freaking out about that. She was like, ah! Uh, and sure enough, there was. we looked it up online. It was like, yeah, tornado warnings. But for how severe of tornadoes? I don't know. How, did, how, how does that work? I have no idea. What the four? Do you create a tornado? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. I don't know the scale. So that sounds like a fun drive. Yeah, and, and she was all like, we're in the lightest car ever made. It's not good to be driving through tornado weather. <laughs> Slap some wings on there. Whee! Get some lift off. <laughs> yeah, so that's my tornado story. Okay. And then I'll rant about the internet speeds in those states. They suck. That's unbelievable. So, Iowa. Yeah, so Nebraska's internet sucked, and... Uh, Iowa was actually really good in Des Moines. But outside of Des Moines, it was just... And where we went through in... I'm, I'm sure Minneapolis was great in Minnesota, but where we went to a town in Laverne, there was, like, nothing. They were, like... If you, if I could have got on dial-up, I would have been happy. It was so bad. Wow. It was just really bad. It was, I didn't like, 4K be, down. I didn't think there'd be any place more remote than our state in terms of connectivity. I guess the, all the farmers and stuff, they're just, they don't figure they don't need internet? I don't know. It's not as important. And that's another thing, um, kind of unrelated to this, but uh, the, the government's trying to transition all the people to do electronic time clocks through the internet, basically, Ooh. or like VPNs. And um, the Department of Agriculture is currently having our real job do stuff because they're making that transition. So they'll be utilizing us until they can make that transition. So it's going to be a while. Department of Agriculture. USDA. USDA. Yeah. They're supposed to have electronic yeah. time clocks. Yeah. The, the people we work with, they're entering in the time cards for people that don't can't get on the internet for electronic time cards. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's going to be a while. So Obama's, um, I don't know. That might help if they get internet. Speaking of government Broadband and internet. internets. Oh, yeah. So what is the deal with that whole... I didn't look it up when I got home because I was too freaked out to look it up. Oh, that the government monitors everything you do? Yeah. Little black boxes? Yeah. But really, I mean, I don't know. I guess... I hadn't heard about that I guess before. Couch Guy had a point about that. What is what? Okay, so after... Um, what is that? The Patriot Act? Yes. Or the... The Patriot Act. The Patriot Act. They required all the major ISP backbones to put these black boxes in to monitor all the traffic that goes through. And, and depending on who you talk to, supposedly they're capturing, capturing and storing all of it. Supposedly. 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 I don't think so. I think they're just monitoring, you know, like, traffic. Like, you, you know, like but, the logs. Well, here's the, the, well okay, okay. To monitor, you have to capture. Okay. You can't just look at one piece of back and go, oh, cool, that's what that is. Yeah, but there's like a buffer, it kind of sorts it out, filters. I'm just saying, I don't think they store it forever. Ah, well, that's, that's, that's the indeterminate part, is, is there an archival? Is there, what's the retention policy? Like, those little boxes obviously can't store everything that's being uploaded. And that's why I asked them, I was like, okay, so... All this gigabytes of data in a second, what are they doing? How are they storing that? And he, and he said, he just kind of had this answer, well, who says the black box days are forever? They could swap it out day in and day, or, you know, just in and out, in and out, in and out. I, I don't know. Where's the policy for the black box? Where, Where's the tech specs for the black box? Who's providing the black box? Who makes the black box? I don't know. I guess the... the the thing is, you can either be on two sides of the fence on that. One, yeah, we need it because they need to catch terrorists if they're planning on blowing up whatever or whatnot. But well, okay, the, the, whatever happened to investigation versus watching over everybody? Big brother. Big brother. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're monitor, monitoring on that level justified by we can catch it before it happens. But how often does that really happen? I don't know. Do they think they publicize it when they do catch people? They do because then that justifies them monitoring. 
because there was something like that that happened in the UK. The, uh, a, a car bomb was caught or something like that because of these security surveillance cameras that were implemented oh, on yeah. the street. And they hyped that because it justified them monitoring all the time. Well, that's how I feel. Hmm. So, or I guess the reverse of that is they don't publicize as much as they catch because then it would cause panic. So the theory is, um, like, if, like handgun control or whatever, right? If you outlaw guns, then just the criminals will have the guns. So if they monitor everything, well, the bad guys are just going to use, you Something know, else. secure servers in another country. Yeah. Or like, a lot of good that does us. Yeah, or like I was explaining to, to Thompson, okay, well, that's fine. I can just always do an SSH tunnel for everything that I do into a server, to a, through a server in Turkey. Yeah. Who's to say that server in Turkey? Turkey isn't being monitored by the Turkey government. True, but who would you trust more? Uh, some black ops server operation out of the country? <laughs> Are you really asking if we're going to trust some, like, random versus our own government? Yeah. You can hold a person accountable. How are you going to hold a government accountable? You can hold some shady guy in some other country that hosts a back-end server that he knows is being used for malicious or things. Illicit purposes? Yeah. You're saying Who's that- to say that guy isn't, like, you know, gathering all your information, like, all right, um, when I need to pay some bills, I'll contact this guy and blackmail him, because I got all kinds of data on him. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, you know. Honestly, I'd rather trust that guy in Turkey. And who's to say, if the government wa- really wanted to pin you down for something, they, they could do it. I mean, they don't need to be monitoring your internet. They could do it regardless. They can just say, hey, you know what? We think you're a terrorist. Bye. Uh, What's, I mean, there's so much information that they're capturing. What are the odds that they're going to ever want to single you out and actually look up your information? If you're high profile enough, I'm sure it can happen. So the guy that hung you upside down, that's his house. I think. You think? I think. I don't see a house, I see a bunch of sticks. Well, he's building it. It's a log house. With all those sticks? Yeah. A lot of sticks. He, he's, um... He builds sticks houses? Yeah. It's like, uh... The Three Little Pigs is the middle one. He built his house out of wood? Yeah, because the first little piggy, he made it out of straw and blew it down. The, oh, the piggy blew it down, huh? Uh, well, no. Big Bad Wolf. Big Bad Wolf blew it down. Anyways, so yeah, the black boxes tapped into everything, or not everything, but major internet backbones. I mean, how, how, how do you mine that data for terrorist activities? You do keyword searches for like, um, but here's the thing. Going to blow up building. (sighs) I don't know. Is it uh, Al Qaeda? Do Al Qaeda kill themselves? Al Qaeda? I seriously doubt it. <laughs> I mean, you can have the term, they, they could be doing a, a con, you know, a, a, a trigger for a phrase "blow up." But how many contexts can that be used in? Did you see the movie Salt? No, I haven't seen Salt yet. Oh, okay. Well, what does it remind you of? Something in Salt. I'm not going to see it, okay. so you can tell me. So, okay, all, all these movies lately, like, all of them are all about, st- there's all these spy movies. There was, like, a, a mm. night... Huh, paranoid CIA spy movies. There's, like, mm. okay, okay. Why so is that happening? There, there's Salt, there's, uh, what was the Tom Cruise one with uh, Night and Day. Night and Day. And uh, Killers with Aston Kutcher and what's-her-face? Cameron Diaz? No, nah, oh. Grey's Anatomy. Cameron Diaz was the one with Tom Cruise. Oh. Anyways, these three movies all came out this summer. Okay. And they're all about, basically, the, the they're all CIA agents or whatever, and they're all corrupt government. It's all our own government that's cor- corrupt in one form or another or one part of it or something. Okay. Uh, it's, just, it's just weird. It's all like, don't trust the government. Yeah. It... Didn't we elect the government? Isn't well, the that's government? the argument. That's the <laughs> argument is that government get, gets so big and so just a large, ent- such a large entity that it's no longer governed by the people who elected it. It, it, it governs itself. It's its own entity. Uh, I suppose. But that's why there's like term limits and all that stuff and all that. 
Anyways, no politics. Politics bad. Don't talk about politics. Technology, that's what we're talking about but, here. Yeah, there, were, there was technology here. <laughs> it was mixed with politics. <laughs> so who's to say... So, so okay, so that's another big thing that they're talking about right now is... And I, I don't even know if you should talk about it because I know nothing about it other than that everybody's upset about it. Okay. What's everybody uh, upset about? Google, oh, Google and Verizon. Google and Verizon. They're like, hey, guess what? We're going to help out with net neutrality by working together and making it up our rules. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's been a debacle <laughs> about that. Um, from what I read, the interpretation as uh, Google was pushing for net neutrality on wired services, but all of a sudden, the wireless, same, the same rules don't apply to wireless networks, right? Because data They're delivery limited. needs to be optimized, optimized yeah. Yeah. for wireless networks, i.e. They want to cut off bits packet of, shaping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So they want to cut off like torrent traffic on the new new three G ne- or four G networks. And, and people were going, okay, Google. I mean, they're trying to bypass this, or they're trying to they're trying to get this under and control on wireless networks and everything like that because uh, people are saying that's the future of uh, the internet. That's the future of connectivity. Is wireless? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, that's the wireless just infrastructure. Be, so whatever ground rules are laid now, and whoever's in control of those rules, uh, is going to have you know a large say and a large hold over future wireless technology. Now, speaking of wireless technology, I finally saw the Prestige, and that was cool. Tesla. Yeah. Tesla. I was re- I was reading the wiki on him more after watching that movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was David Bowie that played him in the movie. Yeah. That's weird. Why is that weird? I don't know, it's just weird. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Anyways, well, he like he was he, he had wireless power, and he thought that he could basically give wireless free power to everybody. But Thomas Edison, uh, people wouldn't fund him and stuff. Oh, the, like in Nolan's interpretation of that feud, Edison was a thug essentially. Yeah, uh, yeah. corporate, uh, you know, espionage. And, uh, well, apparently it was true. Like he was, yeah, he was using. Um, AC power to like fry sheep and stuff saying oh it's dangerous you don't want that kind of power very industrial revolution version of modern day fud slinging corporate espionage uh, subversion things like that the weird thing is he died broke he like lost his rights to AC power he owned AC he had the rights to power to power as we know it the whole grid infrastructure system bad things can happen to <laughs> and he kind of grew old and crazy and he like he like had this pigeon that he loved and he lived in a hotel and he was really weird he was like a really weird guy he never married or dated anyone he was just well he probably had guy. well <laughs> don't say strange say misunderstood <laughs> <laughs> and you know in today's times he would have been diagnosed with some as backward syndrome and he would have been on medication and he wouldn't have invented anything like he made the death ray um yeah, it's like apparently it was like a, they called it different things. It was like a peace, whatever, and they also called it a death ray. And it, it, he actually, they like recently uncovered because um, he was an immigrant. He was from where? Uh, I can't remember, but he was from some other country like Czechoslovakia or something like that. Somewhere in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Not this continent. <laughs> Mainland Europe? Yeah. And, uh, and even though he was naturalized, he, when he died, the government um, took all of his stuff because he didn't really have any family because he never you know, had children or anything like that. So and the U.S. government or his native? The U.S. government Cold. confiscated everything. Well, that's almost as bad as what um, Britain, Britain did to Turing. Oh, yeah. They yeah. castrated the poor guy. Yeah. Because <laughs> he was gay. And, uh, oh, man, just... Go- government <laughs> government stealing another man's ideas for itself government castrating and persecuting somebody for being homosexual uh, that's weird how do they even do that do you do you really want to know no, I mean not technically I mean they I'm, chemically castrated them I think is what they did oh uh, you can do that I think so huh it wasn't very nice either way what they did to Turing yeah Okay, this, the other is, lane. this is, is not weird. going anywhere. <laughs> oh, guy, finally. This guy's like, um, 
yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so back to technology. We keep straying and going into governments. And because, well, here's... <laughs> technology used to be a very um, discreet part of, of culture. But it's, it's very subversive, and it gets... It's, it's, it's being integrated into everything. Well, it, it's interesting, because like, that was, what, 100, just a little over 100 years ago, maybe 150 years ago, that basically electricity was invented. Yeah. And that's... Before that, there, and really there was... And was... that was technology, but there was politics involved in that. Right. Concerning government funding, grants, competition with another technology. No matter how you look at it, technology is not just... It's not going to be disconnected from anything. But, like, this guy, he, he invented radio transmissions. Um, Tesla. Uh, RF? Um, I don't know. They said radio, so I don't know what, what frequency or whatever. Mm-hmm. But... Basically, the first you know long-range radio broadcasting. Okay. And he oh a radio controlled like he was driving he he made a submarine a remote submarine so they could drive it around remotely, and he was he was trying to sell it to to people. Nice. So he made a toy remote control submarine. Yeah. Yeah. Except for like life size or well I mean I, I don't think his it was, mock it was, was life size bigger but, because of the you know there yeah. wasn't modernization in the components he used. And like that town in uh, Colorado Springs, it really happened. He electrified the ground or something so that um, power could be ducted just through the ground. How did that? I still don't know how that happened. How, how, how did he do that? And that's the thing. All, all, all these things that he had been thinking of and he made, he, um, he had it all documented. And I think government... one of us just stopped recording. I heard it. Did it be? Ooh, it's hot. I bet we overheated. I have a separate file. And we're back. All right, I'm Pox. I'm Raggable. And we're back with no battery, it looks like. Hey, we can make it to at least do an extra. Because <laughs> I didn't stop it properly last time. Anyways, we left off talking about Tesla. Yeah. And how uh, we did electricity through the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Apparently, we developed a whole bunch of technologies that just never um, got funded or people were afraid of or got muscled, muscled them out of it. It was just ideas and inventions before like that whole time. like I, I don't know if you remember when Back to the Future 2 came out people were saying oh yeah there's really hoverboards but the tire industry won't you know there's hover cars and boards but the tire industry won't let it happen because it put them out of business or uh, I, I hear people tell me all the time oh yeah they can make a, a gas engine they can get 100 miles to the gallon no problem it's the oil industry won't let them that, that one's more plausible than the tire industry how big is the oil economy for the United States? Ah, oh, it's a pretty big deal. But then why go to such great lengths to put a hybrid together? Is it all just pure gimmick? I don't know. Well, apparently, though, in the past couple of years, they really have tuned well, up engines. Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, compare uh, mileage ratings from cars, you know, in the early 2000s to mileage ratings of older cars, like in the 80s or whatever. Right. It just... People were more concerned about power than mileage at that point in time. Yeah. So they were developing cars with better power. Makes sense. They didn't make the car that sells. And now the car that sells is the car that gets you the most bang for your buck out of mileage. Yeah. And then we try to compromise a little bit. And that, we'll give you what you want, but not too much. We'll, well, like this we'll car, the big selling point was like, well, you know, we need get the old Prius users to upgrade to the new one. So what's better about this year's model than the last year's? We're going to give them a more powerful engine. We're going to give them, but you know... the same, you know... But, and we're going to give them better gas mileage. So we're giving them both. We're making it bigger, we're giving it more power, and we're making it save more money. Why couldn't you do that before? I don't know. That's speculation. <laughs> Supposedly they figured out ways to make it more efficient. Huh? Yeah, Alright, do you want to exit because we're out of battery on the H4N? Yeah, we better wrap this thing up. And besides, I get sick of editing these ones that we've gone for like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> we should just cut it to 30 minutes. That's it. One way yeah. back, one way back. Yeah, really, that's what it should be. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh, uh, you know what? I really got to, I, I hate to put another ad in there, but I really need to remind myself to post the contest for Zazzle on the t shirts. 
Ah, okay. So post the content for Zazzle. Zazzle with our code, you can get yeah, Zazzle.com. And save um, Zazzle.com slash what? Oh, use our code. Use our code. Uh, our insane code at the bottom of the screen. Oh God, that code. <laughs> it's new. This we got month. we got a new code from Zazzle. But it's saves you ten percent. So even though you got to write it down, it's a good one. Yes. <laughs> does help us out yeah and you can make cool things and my t-shirt contest is going through the month of august uh, at the end of the month we'll pick a winner or actually it'll be up for votes so the people on the site smartguys.com can vote and i will personally buy a bunch of them for us to wear when we go out and about a bunch of them huh well i don't know maybe two or three okay so and it needs to say something along the lines to let people know that we're streaming them uh, so you know like a fair warning like you're live on on uh, twosmartguys.com slash live. Okay. Yeah. It's just like a disclaimer, you're being filmed. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you don't want me to record, um, tell me to stop or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something something as even as subtle as always on record. Yeah, there we go. Something real. Like a big record button. Yeah. yeah always on record on the back. It says twosmartguys.com live. Yeah, something like that. There's another one. And uh, just to remind everybody, we ha- have tutorial shows that we do once a week, uh, every Monday on uh, twosmartguys.com. Our content's all over the place, YouTube, Medio, Just TV, Just TV live stuff Wednesdays at uh, 10.30 Mountain Time. 10.30 Mountain Time. See you guys next week. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.